Hello my loves, today we're going to be doing these beautiful, beautiful nails on a real person and that real person has these teeny tiny little cutesy nails and it's Chloe, she's back from university so I have real hands to work on. So Chloe nibbles as you can see, she hasn't had anything done to her nails for ages, she has a lot of excess uh, non-living tissue that's grown over the cuticle area and onto the nail plate so I spent a lot of time prepping that. I did it all off camera because you've seen me prep a million times. I added my pro stiletto tips because she wanted a coffin nail so they're flatter and uh, I've just cut literally snipped the end off and we've got a coffin nail so it's nice and simple and yeah we're going to add a little bit of clear acrylic there and I'm just pressing on these little glitter hearts from Lucente that we got back in <clears throat> for their Valentine's collection. Um, but they're so beautiful. So I'm going to press some of those in. Just add in tiny little areas of clear acrylic, nice and gentle. She has even smaller nails than me. Chloe herself is just diddy. She's four foot eleven and like a size three shoe. She's just diddy. So once I've got those bits of glitter into place, I give them a couple of seconds to set. <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat. And then I just go with a little wet bead of clear acrylic and leave it to set. Go on to the next nail, leave it to set. So we're going to the index finger because that's having the same. I can't stop looking at the C curve on my thumb. <laughs> if you're interested in these nails, the, I used the TX Elite tips for those and my crystals. All available on the website, shameless plug. It's not shameless plug actually, is it? Cause it's my own channel. It'd be a shameless plug if I plugged it on someone else's channel. <laughs> <laughs> so I've done the same one here. I'm just gonna put the clear down and then press the glitter in. I'm actually using my um, pro pickup tool for picking up the glitter pieces because it's so much easier. Now the pro pickup tools are almost out of stock but I have the new Alina crystal pickup tools as well. So they're available on the website and the Alina ones are clear and this beautiful light pink and the pro pickup tool is red and it comes in a case. The Alina one comes in a case but it's a different kind of case. So these have dried and they're set into place and now going in with perfect pink from Nailmate. The whole system I use for acrylic is Nailmate. And I'm just going to place a teeny, this is a size 10 brush just to give you an indication. I could probably use a size 6 on Chloe because her nails are so small. So I'm working with a medium consistency with the bead and tucking it in at the cuticle and then feathering it down a little bit. Now I'm aware that at the moment the ombre is too far up. It is difficult to ombre things on very small nails. So just work in smaller beads so that you don't end up with that kind of bumpy nail. We're going to go in with a little bit more. So realistically I could have started the glitter further down the tip but I wasn't sure where the blend point would be when it was all done and I just thought hmm well I'd rather have too much glitter than not enough. So blendy blendy, very gentle movements there we go and when you're trying to ombre or blend don't use the tip of your brush and scoop use the underneath of your brush and just pat and tap and drag slightly if you scoop you'll just move all the product right so same here tip of the brush to tuck it in tip to tuck and then using the underneath of the brush just feathering that down and then we're going with some more Thank you. 
On to the two middle nails. They are going to be full nails of perfect pink. So I'm doing this one in two beads. I don't know why, I just thought I would. It's funny, isn't it? Sometimes I'll just do a one bead, sometimes I'll do a two bead, sometimes I'll do a three bead. Doesn't really matter, does it? We teach one way because you need to uh, uh, practice the same method over and over and over. And then once you're proficient in that method and you feel confident, then you can play with your methods and do things that suit you better. But it's easier just to learn one way to start with. Otherwise, trying to, you know, it's like we drive one way when we're learning, don't we? We kind of adapt it ourselves as we go. So that's the first bead on, nice and neat. The more work you do with your brush, the less work you have to do with your file, which saves your hands and shoulders. And trust me, I know about that. So getting that cuticle bead tucked in with just a hair's gap by the cuticle so it's not touching, but it looks like it is. It's like an optical illusion. And then blend it into the first bead. Patting, tapping, and then sort of smoothing that product out. There we go. <clears throat> I might, oh, got a brush hair in there, look. This brush is on its way out, to be fair. Okay. Gonna place that little bead at the, cut at the cuticle, really? Hello, Sarah. At the tip. <laughs> And just pat it, tap it, and smooth it into place. There we go. Checking my apex on that. And we'll do exactly the same on this one. Okie dokie. So now we're going to encapsulate the two nails with the glitter on. Now I did not build my apex fully um, with the nude because it's such a high blend. I thought, well, I'll just encapsulate the whole thing. So um, I'm going to do encapsulate the whole thing in crystal clear acrylic.
Oh yes, don't forget the thumbs. So the thumbs are going to be full nude. And I got a big old bead there. So you may have a size 10 brush, but if you're working on smaller nails, it's a lot easier to, to do something like a one bead method. Or one ball, whatever you call it. Everyone calls it something different. One blob. One splat. <laughs> you just got to make sure your beads at the right consistency where it's not going to fall off and it's not going to set up too quick. And I think that changes as to the temperature of your room as well. Or the temperature of your client's hands. So if you've got someone that's really, really hot, that bead will set quicker. There we are. So I will need to sort of add little bits here and there, but the general one bead is done. But I'm never happy. Always going back in. I just needed an apex. It was a bit flat. Just needed a little apex and a little bit more. Just smooth it down. So I leave a little bit more in the back. Not much, so it doesn't need a huge apex. And then just walk that through the nail. Patting and smoothing and tapping, but it's all gentle movements. That's the key. And then I might, I can't remember if I added a little bit just at that, yeah, because it was a bit thin. I thought by the time I filed that, well, you know what will happen. Tap it in at the sides, we don't want to lose that shape. Right, on to filing. So these have not been filed yet. I'm just going to show you briefly, I'm doing side wall. Side wall. Sorry, my hand is in the camera's way. The free edge. It's easier for me to show you filing someone else's hands than it is my own. I put around the cuticle, so up and over. And I just saw a lump there, which I got on the way. I don't normally do that, but why not? And then round the other side, tucking it in at the cuticle. And you see, I'm not going crazy fast. I don't want to risk slicing anyone. Make sure you scored your file before you use it because the, the edges are very, very sharp. And then I do the up and down. I love the up and down. It's, uh, it's a good way to smooth out any uneven areas. And then that's it really, I just continue with the same. I think I'll show you one more nail, um, just to go back over it again. But once you get a kind of filing routine that's um, repetitive, it makes it so much easier to work because all your nails will be filed the same way. Using our Gerald, if you haven't got one of Gerald or his family, why not? They're so soft, so, so soft. There we are. I always go back over at the end as well. I always dust it off and then go back over the side walls and free edge. Onto this one, exactly the same thing here. When I think about yesterday My oh my My oh my So as if by magic, they've all been filed, but then I change them slightly and I turn around, turn the client's hand round to face me. And I look from their perspective and then I just make sure they're nice and straight. I make sure they're nice and angled correctly because the fingers are twisted. Not all fingers are straight. I, I've not had anyone. Oh yeah, I had one lady who had really straight fingers. And it was a blessing. And she had long nail beds and elegant looking hands. Oh, it was amazing. But yes, Chloe's fingers just wanted to go all over the place. 
So I'm literally just checking them from that angle. I know you can't see much, but it's very simple. Now onto the crystals. These are all part of the brand new red velvet mix that has been released. It's live on the website now, and they're also available to buy individually if you'd rather. So these are the kite, the deep red kite. They're such a gorgeous color. And I'm just going in with some builder gel. I think I was using Lacente's builder gel in a bottle. And I just apply a little bit there. Grab my crystal and pop it on. The stunning, so, so stunning this red. I've never liked red crystals, but I just love them. I love these ones so much. And then the same on the next finger. So although I won't like, I'm only putting a thin layer of gel just to stick them down. I'll seal them in later. Obviously using my pickup tool. Obvs. Okay. There we go. So I'm just going to straighten them out as the fingers rest because they sort of fall in their own direction, don't they? And then into the lamp, back out, and now I'm going in with the small diamonds. Beautiful. That's in deep red as well. Obviously, part everything I'm using is part of the Red Velvet collection. All they're available individually as well. And if you use the code Sarah5, you can get 5% discount. So I'll just carry on this design down the nail it just goes to show that she's only got small nails but the mix pack includes like big shapes small shapes and round flat backs from ss4 to ss16 and it's a smaller mix pack than the blush bliss so like the ab um, ultimate collection and the blush bliss are big mix packs of like sort of round about 700 crystals this is a smaller mix pack and that was requested by some of you who don't do nails as often and you don't want or you don't have the the money to spend tons on crystals but you want them you want the mixes so i made a smaller mix pack of the reds it's called red velvet it has uh, is it 360 crystals in roughly um that's the ss8 round flat back yeah, this mix is, it's got more shapes than my normal small mixes. My normal small mixes are a lot of round flat backs with one or two shapes. This has got 14 different shapes in it still. So, yeah. A couple of pounds more expensive than the other mixes because of that. Because the shapes are more expensive. But it's still really good value for money. So that's an SS8 there. And then I'm going to pop an SS8 at the top as well, well, either side of the kite. So we'll just pop that on. Oh, it fell off. Pop it on. Pop. I just, I can't get over the glow. They're very glowy, these uh, crystals. Super blingy, honey. Do exactly the same on the other finger. And we've got the SS6. Beautiful. And we'll pop them on.
and finally the smallest ss4s tiny tiny still sparkly though Okay, so they're all cured in place and we're going to top coat now. The index finger and pinky are being top coated with Madame Glam's gloss top coat. So no wipe top coat, super glossy. Beautiful. And same on the index finger. There we are. And then what I'm going to do is on the fingers with the crystals, I'm actually going to use a matte top coat and use a detailer brush to apply it. So I'll show you one of them. You'll get the gist of it. You don't need to see two, you'll fall asleep. It takes longer, but you must, must, must remember not to go over the crystals with top coat. That's the worst thing you can do. It makes them look awful and it just ruins the whole effect. You don't need to go over them. You just need to go around them and make sure you bring that top coat up to the base. Once that's all done, they cured in the lamp and we applied Madame Glam's Elixir cuticle oil. And here's the finished set. 
that I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the products on the website and I'll see you in my next one. Tally bye. Bye.